this week, the Journal World reported that the City Commission transferred over $3 million from various reserve accounts into the capital and equipment reserve funds because more money was accumulating in those accounts than policy calls for. The Commission has wide discretion to determine how excess, excess funds will be used, including things like lowering property taxes or funding social service agencies like the homeless shelter. And commissioners indicated in the article that they would like more discussion on where to direct those funds in the future. In the next few years, if you're given the opportunity to allocate excess reserve funds, what sort of things might you consider using those funds for? Excess reserve funds. So first, I, I do want to say that uh, when, when we start talking about this, it, we, we touched on this earlier about transferring money and the budget process and the way that we are currently structured, uh, the way the city has our budget process currently structured. We, if we're gonna make any kind of decision like that, uh, I believe the city commission needs to uh, take greater account of what the citizens expect, have more, hold more public comment, take a little bit more time, maybe a week or two, and really gauge where the public thinks that that money ought to go to because ultimately it's, it's our money, it's coming out of all of our pockets. Certainly the city commission has discretion on how best to use those funds and they should. Uh, projects such as infrastructure projects that replacing uh, stormwater infrastructure in Athan, Ohio would be one that pops into mind. Uh, concentrating probably a bulk of those on our much aging infrastructure. Um, yeah, so <laughs> I'm, I'm sure I'm going to agree with these gentlemen. They're going to agree that I felt like there was a little bit of a shell game being played there, and I also felt like um, some of the administrative discretion was um, um, one of the problems with transparency when it came to how that money ended up where it was. Um, and I'm going to go a little step further than um, Rob here. We have a woefully outdated stormwater plan, and if anyone has a property in this town this year, they know it. Um, and so uh, when we, and many of us do talk about climate change, we need to remember we live in a river valley, and we need to be uh, very focused on how that's going to affect our homes. Um, in addition to that, in terms of using extra money, thank you, um, we are pretty far behind in doing things in terms of sustainability. I don't know if anybody else was a little embarrassed that Baldwin has solar panels and we don't. Um, I think we can talk about bigger projects like that when we find uh, large pots of money that we weren't planning to see. Uh, this is something we talk about in the budget process. Um, I think it's true we didn't discuss the transfer very much. The transfer is made after we approve the budget, as I understand it. Um, I, there was a great letter to the editor by a former mayor, um, Rob Chestnut. He said, you should use this money for one-time projects. You know, if it's, if it's an excess, then you, you shouldn't try to fund something as an ongoing project for that. And I think that's something that it's really important for us to keep in mind. So I, I agree that the infrastructure projects, these are the kinds of uses that are really appropriate. And we have such a backlog of unfunded infrastructure projects you know, that, and one of the things that we also need to do is have better accounting software at, at the city to be able to actually do our accounting. We are using an outmoded and um, just not optimal system. So there are all kinds of things we could invest this money in so that the citizens will be better served. I don't know how many cities there are in Kansas that have the problem of too much money lying around and we're debating what to do with it. Um, I do, I happen to agree with that particular letter to the editor that using excess funds for one-time purchases or anything like that is preferable. Doing, you know, adding to the budgets of another agency will, will be nice for them for one year, but then what happens next year when you don't have the money? Um, I happen to agree infrastructure projects should take priority. At the same time, I think my biggest concern was the lack of transparency. The first time we heard that there was going to be 
that money available was when, after it had already been allocated. And I think from a transparency perspective as the government, you know, we have to say, here's this money available, we'll have a public hearing on what we plan to do with it and allow the citizens of Lawrence to make proposals. Even if we have our own ideas, we need to be responsible and respectful to the taxpayers of Lawrence and make that happen. I think the list is long. I do agree that it should be one-time expenses. Obviously, if not, it'd be in your budget, um, your ongoing budget. Um, the list of one-time expenses, I think, um, is, you know, certainly there's infrastructure projects that we need, the stormwater projects we need. I know the city soon will be talking about that they should spend some extra money on the police um, facility to make, the, make some final um, enhancements there while the construction crews are on site. Um, I also think there's been ongoing discussion about creating a fund to help um, with utility assistance um, with the water departments. If anyone works in the social service agencies, one of the hardest entities to work with is the city of Lawrence when dealing with um, a, a past due bill. Westall is easy to work with, KCPL is easy to work with, the city of Lawrence is not. And you could use some of those funds to create a, um, a fund to help with utility assistance. So lots of ideas. Yeah, for me, I think it should be investments. And so we know the equation, we've done it before. $11 million in green energy arrays on public facilities like fire stations or schools generates half a million dollars in savings annually after that. And so why are we not doing that constantly, you know? Um, investing in uh, green energies. The, ab the median age of Lawrence is 27 years old. And by the time that we achieve the age of some of our opponents in this race, the effects of climate change will be serious in our community. It is fiscally irresponsible not to take action now because the cost will be so much higher in the future. We also can ramp up existing programs like the weatherization grant to help folks uh, make their homes more efficient, get down utility costs, um, and expand affordability in that way, as well as reducing our uh, carbon emissions. Um, those, are, those are the things that I would look at.